what we're doing here today is harvesting nukes out of these uh, third boxes. In this particular yard, all the entrances are facing backwards on the double screen board. And we created these nukes uh, about three weeks ago. We made them pretty good. There were three, maybe four frames of brood, so they're really nice nukes. We're harvesting and we're putting them in these Jester nuke boxes to sell on Saturday. And then what we're going to do is leave one or two frames behind up here and put a queen cell with it, which will hopefully mate, and then we'll use this nuke later to requeen re this lower colony. Well, what we got going on here is that these colonies are ready for supers. They're in really good shape. Timing's perfect. You can see on these two, we've already put two supers on top. First thing we did, we went through the bottom colony quickly to make sure it didn't have any swarm cells or, you know, larva in cups or any of that business. Put as much brood in the bottom box as we possibly can, even if it's 10 frames, get, just get it down. That helps with swarm control. And of course there still might be one, two, or three in the upper box and we put whatever empty comb and honey and assets up there that there might be. And we put the two supers on. And this is where this double screen board used to be, right here. And what we did is, after leaving a frame or two of bees in this box to receive a cell tomorrow, and those frames are hatching bees, uh, we reversed the entrance and put it towards the front of the colony. We can see what's happening. All the field force from this upper nuke is now coming home to look, to look for their old entrance, and it's not there. So we're creating a crack right here in this corner where the entrance used, used to be. And the field force from that nuke is now entering the lower colony. This does not need all of those bees. It's just a queen mating nuke. So all of these bees are now going to go into this bottom colony and boost that population right on the verge of the honey flow here. So it, it works beautifully. It's not like a, adding a full force colony to the bottom, but it is something. You can see there's quite a few bees coming home looking for their old entrance and they'll help the lower colony produce honey. Does that make sense to you? Yeah. Yeah, it works. I'd do it. Yeah, I mean, there's all <laughs> kinds of tricks. And then there's this thing right here. Let's look at this. Um, we're out of these uh, double screen boards. We're just, gosh, we got 675 and they're all in use. We, and this one had swarm cells in it. So we wanted to split it into a triple. And we just took an extra lid, put a lid on the bottom. This was a double deep, of course. We put a lid on the bottom and I've created an entrance right here. I can put about two fingers in there, maybe three if I try hard enough. And that will be the entrance for this second story box. And then we did have one double screen board that we could use for the top box, but when you run out of uh, double screen boards, you can get creative and make entrances. Like you could make an entrance by cracking a lid. You know, this one, I just could have cracked the lid like that and made an entrance and that would have worked. But in this case, we're just uh, kind of offsetting the box a little. And it works, I've done it a bunch. As long as you have flat lids, it works. It doesn't work with a, you know, lid with cleats or anything like that on it. I guess it would work with a telescoping cover too. Yeah, that's a flat lid also. Anyway, so we're going to try to do the same routine to all these colonies that uh, are in good shape and ready for supers. Now, you know, now we're getting into the season where every little trick to make these honey producers a little fatter, a little sassier, uh, a little stronger, every little trick is helpful. So we'll be pulling all the tricks in our hat out, out for the next few weeks. These are great. They're bringing in an interesting honey. So bring that, bring that over here. Uh, shake, go ahead and shake the bees off first. Yeah. This has me a little stumped. Mm -hmm. It's really good too. Red. Mm, that's really good. I don't know what it is, honestly. It's too early for tulip poplar. Um, black, blackberries aren't blooming yet. It's really earlier than the... Uh, well, they don't work dogwoods. The red buds are done. I mean, you tell me. What's blooming? <laughs> what, a combi what about a combination of blackberry and maybe like autumn olive? Blackberries or? aren't open yet. Are they not? No. They're I open mean, at my grandma's house. Yeah, but that's south of here. Uh, yeah. Yeah, no, they're not open here. You can see them. They're, they're just not open. Um, 
I don't know what it is. I don't really. They don't work dogwoods. Um, and bla and blackberry honey is light in color. Ah. Okay. And that's Cherokee rose right there. That's not blackberry. So I don't. I'm a little stumped on this one. Of course, I said the blackberries aren't open, but I think that right there is blackberry, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's not blackberry honey, though. That's way right. too dark for too blackberry. Dark. I've never known them to work the Cherokee Rose, uh, but you know, Mother Nature does weird things. Like one out of 10 or one out of 20 years, you know, plants do weird things that they're not normally doing. Maybe it's something secreting nectar that, you know, I've yeah. not run across before. I don't know. Anyway, we're right on the verge of our spring flow here. So doing all these tricks and adding supers and stuff. Once they settle in and start making honey, as long as they got the space to store honey, they'll forget about swarming. Yeah. No, they really do. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, um, they're too they, busy. Yeah, they get into hoarding mode. and they, <laughs> it's, it's interesting what happens. But this is really encouraging that they're drawing out this foundation on whatever it is. So what's the date today? It's the 19th, 19th of April. I think. The 19th of April is a little too early for a honey flow in this area. So uh, it's not a normal year. So, And this isn't normal honey. I don't know what it is. <laughs> you know what? It doesn't matter. It's good. They can make all they want. <laughs> <laughs> I'm all for it. So th what they're going through right now is this was a triple... This colony was a triple just like that, that we left swarm cells in uh, on March 23rd. The top two boxes are mated. They got really nice laying queens. And this one is too. And this one is too. So this triple, which actually that's a better picture. That was a triple just like this. <coughs> Excuse me. This is CCC, which is cell, cell, cell on 323. So that's also March 23rd. So Seth, you can go through this one next and check it out. Okay. This is an exciting time. You know, it's spring and all these queens, new queens are starting to come on board and we can start moving away from producing nukes for sale and making queen mating nukes and uh, putting on supers. This is a fun time of year for me. As long as the weather is good and we got good weather for the next, uh, did you look at the weather report? We got a lot of dry weather coming up for the yeah. next week and a half. Which is very unusual for this time of year, too. I hope we don't turn into a drought. Yeah. But, uh, okay, John, that one's the same thing. That looks like a great nuke. You oh, can. Man, uh, it's like, it's huge. Yeah, so he, so he can pull his, he can pull a five frame nuke out of here to sell this Saturday and still have a frame or two of brood left over yeah, and manager. reverse the entrance, do just what we did yeah, down there. Right here. I, I presume this is a good colony. You'll have to look at it, of yeah. course. If it's like those two, put give it two supers. Okay, yeah. Let's we'll see if this nuke is drawing foundation. Oh, yeah, but you can see that they, oh, drew, gosh, they yeah. made that. Oh, wow. They're That's drawing the foundation all the way to the wall. <laughs> to the wall. <laughs> That's awesome. Okay, great. Mm. Nice day. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> a lot of pollen coming in too. A lot, yeah. I noticed. Yeah, they're bringing in. That's cool, man. Them forgers are going right back into that. It is going to blow that thing up. They're going to blow that up. Yeah. yeah. That's All pretty right. cool. Tips and tricks, John. I know, tips man. That's, I, that's the first time I think I've seen us do that. Basically. You got to be John Land to know all the tips. Right. Exactly. <laughs> I talked about that years ago. Seth. <laughs> Seth. <laughs> Seth said something about six months ago. He says, "How long have you been here? Four years? Three years? Three years? Three years?" He says, "We don't do. We don't ever do the same thing. Right. <laughs> Every year's different. It's always different. And that, that's part of the key to be being successful at beekeeping is not doing the same thing, but being flexible enough." to roll with the situation. This is obviously a way different year. Right. I mean, everything's different That's about this year. And if we were rigid and didn't have the ability to be flexible and kind of roll with this situation, uh, we it would hurt us, you know, we wouldn't be yeah. as successful. And that's the art of beekeeping. There's the science and then there's the art. And this is the art of beekeeping, be able to read the conditions and and change your uh, management techniques to kind of go with what's going on at the moment. Anyway, good bees, yeah. good day, good bees. honey coming in, good, good things. Okay, switching gears today. First day of supering. Hope these bees are good. We haven't been here in three weeks. What I'm hoping is that there's not many swarm cells. We'll find out shortly. We've run across a couple with cells already, but uh, 
got a lot of good ones so I want to show you what we're doing here because there's no supers on here yet and there's no sugar water in this top box we have not fed the bees since we put this top box on so uh, I'm gonna make this into a honey super first thing to do of course is make sure there's no swarm cells in this thing This is the remnants from the, we gave him an apigard treatment uh, three weeks ago, almost exactly three weeks ago. That's what's left over. They got cups, but there's no eggs or larvae in the cups, so as far as I'm concerned, it's a non-issue. And uh, what I'm going to do, I'm going to put this empty box right here. I like starting with the feeder because it's the easiest thing to take out. And I'm going to shake all the bees off of all these frames into the bottom and put the frames over here. They've already drawn out a lot. This is interesting stuff. Build it up get the smoker set off the hive tool. Oh look at that. That, that looks just like tulip poplar. Dark, has kind of a red tint. Hmm. I love tulip poplar. That's good honey. Peanut butter sandwich worthy? I'd put that on my peanut butter sandwich. <laughs> Of course, we're going to have a little bit of pollen in these combs because there has been brood reared here. Lots of larvae and eggs. feeder doesn't really have much to do with a honey super but for now we're going to leave it in there and again there's no sugar water in there that has, this has not been fed with those frames on top a lot of drones in there Try to draw out a lot of foundation on the spring flow. These are just medium supers with brand new. Uh, I think this is it's so bright yellow. This would be Premier. They have that bright yellow color. John Deere yellow. I call it uh, Dollar General yellow. <laughs> UGA did a study several years ago about under supering versus over supering and the difference in uh, honey production and they found out that the difference was really pretty minimal. Uh, in general, when the flow is on and I'm supering, I like to top super, mainly so I can just come along and look under the lid and see how they're doing, see if they need another super or not. But in this case, because it's still pretty early in the spring and we're giving them a box of foundation, I'm putting it in the middle because I, I want them to have that sense of void or as uh, Davy just said that uh, on accomplishment like they've got something they've got to work on. So we got all this brood 
and honey up here. In three weeks, this will be all honey because all that brood will have hatched. Even the eggs that have just been laid will be gone in three weeks and they'll backfill this with honey, theoretically. I don't see why not. The season's doing okay so far. Hopefully they'll draw out that foundation in the meantime also. And we will be back here probably in 10 days to figure out what they've been doing with all of this and see if they need another super. The one drawback to under supering is you've got to take the whole box off to see what they've done with the box underneath. I'm cracking the lid for two reasons. One thing, I, I think leaving this extra ventilation in this crack here helps with swarm control, oddly enough. I kind of learned that just casually. It seemed like whenever I did it, I had less swarming and I kind of come to the conclusion that it really has an effect. And the other reason for this is because we had drone brood in this box and you've got to give the drones a way out or else they'll get clogged up on the excluder because they can't get through the excluder. So this, this colony theoretically, well not theoretically, it really does already have 20 or 25 pounds of honey in it. And uh, we don't particularly like pulling deep boxes of honey, <laughs> but this works. So we're going to do the whole yard this way. Thanks, Seth. Jesse found this colony that with swarm cells, but the queen was still there. So we're going to resist the urge to make a bunch more splits with any cells we find. It's really, today, it's all about trying to produce honey. So he's got the queen downstairs now. Uh, they've raked all the cells out. I want to put a box of drawn comb right over the excluder. That really should give the bee something to do immediately. And we'll put that box that's been shaken out, the deep box been shaken out up on top. But not only are we going to crack the lid, Jesse, but I want to put a crack along between that deep box and this medium. I want to have a crack about that big all along the front. Okay. Crack the back of the lid. We'll give them lots of space, uh, airiness, I guess is the right word. Yeah. That super drawn comb immediately over the excluder and keep our fingers crossed that they'll forget about swarming. A lot of times, if you can just get the colonies into producing honey, they'll just forget swarming. And uh, it doesn't work every time with all these little tricks, but it's, it's worth doing because it works often enough. We've got both drawn comb and uh, foundation on the truck, so we can go either direction. Also, when we're checking these boxes for swarm cells, we always try to come straight up because if you try to pry them off and go a little bit sideways, you can ruin any swarm cells that might be hanging off the bottom boards, bottom bars. So I crack the box loose and I'll go up instead of over to have a look-see. Okay, there's a young larva in this cell. Looks like there's a couple. This colony is not swarmed yet. They've got uh, young larva in cells, so I think we can save this one for sure. Once they have sealed cells, it's a lot harder to turn them around, but when they have these young cells, like queen cells like this, uh, you can usually manipulate them, manipulate them into staying put with all these little tricks. So that's what I'll have a little work to do. I gotta go through the colony and look for cells on every frame. Okay, so these two colonies got that uh, front entrance between the supers routine. Only did it to a couple. They were the ones that were really thinking real serious about swarming. Of course, they got the crack in the lid too. All the rest just got the crack in the lid. That really is good enough, I think. This yard was pretty good. I think we're going to make some honey here. Lots of bees. Tulip poplars blooming, blackberries are blooming. Got some warm weather ahead. Keeping our fingers crossed. Our observation hive is packed. 
I actually swarmed two days ago and they never even landed anywhere. They just swarmed up in the air and circled all over the place and then they came back. And uh, we saw the queen the next day in here. She's got a yellow dot. So all we can figure is that the queen didn't leave so they had to come back. But they've definitely got some swarm cells. There's one right there. And there's another one right there behind those bees. They've got it covered up pretty good. And of course, I'm sure there's several more in here that we can't see. This is an eight frame observation hive. It's four high and two deep, two wide, I guess I should say, uh, deep frames. So they are packed. We have been feeding them. They have hardly any feed. So we've been feeding them with this quart jar, one to one sugar syrup, keep them from starving. And uh, there's a really good chance they'll swarm again today and perhaps this time the queen will leave with them. It's a pretty nice observation hive. We made it, oh gosh, probably eight or nine years ago. It has a three inch tube going through the wall. Comes out on the other side. And of course in our retail store, this is a big deal. Kids and their parents come in all the time. Kids love to look at it. They want to see the queen. We put a big yellow dot on her when we installed this, so she, if she's out, if she's on the outside, she's really easy to spot. So I don't see her today, so I guess she's inside in between the frames. I know there's got to be more swarm cells than the two I spotted.